know, it's going to raise the issue of, of definitely of gender, race, and class. It, it's going to raise that um, conversation. The conversation for students or faculty or staff will be who do they most identify with? You know, what kind of experiences that have they had um, will generate the bigger questions. Well, certainly this is a person of means. Certainly this is a person who um, has everything. Why hasn't, if he believes what he says he believes, why hasn't he changed the way he lives? Um, and so that might generate conversation for students who come out of a monocultural background. Emotionally, he was attached to something and that something was taken from him and the only person that was present was this woman of color. And so she must have done it because I've traced all my steps and he's done, again, he's done all of the convincing that he had it on, he brought it home, he put it on the desk and then it's gone. The evidence is clearly there. She's the only person in the house. Um, how could you not side with him? Because that's what is before us, visually. And so I would play the devil's advocate by saying that's, that's the visual, that's the intellect. Um, but then I'm a theologian. <laughs> so the intellect is both the heart and the head. And I would have to say, you know, if I'm relying on both, um, could he have made a mistake? I just kind of sat there and I went, gosh, that's such a horrible situation to be in. That is, um, but I could see that happening to me. It could happen to me. I could be in somebody's office on campus and something could come up missing. And they would say, did you take my, my whatever? Um, I would be insulted and I would think it would be about race. Um, and so I think you do lose a sense of, I'm just going to go with the facts. I'm just going to stick with um, these two sides and try to make the best case possible. But emotionally, one is drawn to leave critical thinking out of the picture and really trying to take into account that somebody was wronged and somebody um, is making an assumption and that there are two sides to this story and I've got to lean one way or the other. <sighs> I've got to make a decision. <laughs> Where my generation or your generation is still very stuck in what I do after work is my business and where I sleep at night is my business and what I do from nine to five to earn my money is my business. Um, I don't know in my lifetime if I will ever see the integration that we're striving for or the diversification um, of people living together, but I think it's possible. I think that we have to talk about it and show it and, and do it um, and not just talk about it. And it, it moves beyond, I'm tolerating these people, <laughs> that person, you people, um, that I really truly believe that this is my sister and my brother and that this is family. Because if we were to take a DNA test or a blood test, no one would know that I was a woman of African descent. As a matter of fact, my DNA may be closer to someone that lives in London or in Sweden. <laughs> um, and so those markers and identifiers um, are helpful if we can say, hmm, it's not about the color of my skin, really. It really is about my cultural context and how do I get to know someone who is different from me. We have to find those talking points that make our stories relevant. They're all important, they're all relevant, and we can sit at the table and have those conversations. <music>